time, we were amazed by the transformation of David from a person on his deathbed to a person who, like old David, is taking things into his hand and very swiftly uh, make sure that Shlomo is going to be the next king in Adonia. And our first question was, what happened here? What did we hear from Natan Anavi, from Bathsheba, that made him um, so concerning, I would say, and so different from the person who, when Bathsheba entered his room and he said, Malach, and we can, you know, like, what do you want? like not even like energetically, uh, to a person who said, you go now to En Rogel, you take Shlomo, you are going to uh, crown him. Uh, and they give commands to everyone involved um, what to do. Now, th this is, with no question, uh, the most important um, and the most interesting thing when you see a person like this, like changing completely. And I said last time, it has to be something very, very powerful uh, to create such a change. And what, what, did, it, what did they say? They said, you promised us. And it's time to fulfill. And yes, they tricked him a little bit. They uh, they pretended that they don't know if David knew about it or not. It's all very nice. But you know what? For this, David just have to say, you know what? Okay, I'll um, uh, yes, I promised you, and uh, to call someone to arrange it because for sure, for sure, he was very very weak. We can see it from the beginning of the period. When we came to questions like this, there are two approaches to answer it locally, um, to find uh, a certain reason, or to reread everything and to re-examine what we know about what's going on in Perikalif. And uh, the people who learned with me over the last two or three years, um, I think they know that I always prefer to go to the little details and to see what is the picture that merged from this examination of different uh, parts of the period. The first question that we presented when we started the chapter one was a, the story about Abishaga Shunamit. It's a story about an old man who does not have even the source to hit his body we chose uh, a complete lack of um, activity, energy. And they came with an amazing idea to find a young girl who is going to sleep with the king and somehow by her body, his body is going to be awakened or, or hit, uh, something like this. Yeah. You know, let me ask you a simple question. Okay, they did not have an air condition. But how about uh, fairness? I'm sure that they had few ways to heat a room. What, what's the story with, like, a young lady? Like, it sounds even a little bit inappropriate, isn't it? A lot of inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is no criticism here, but I ask about the idea. Listen, I'm sure that even David, who lack any strength at the, at the time, he had some people to, you know, to be around him. Someone had to come with the idea, listen, the king is suffering from such a lack of, uh, he's cold, let's hit his room, you know? Older people indeed need more, more, yes? It's not a physical cold, it's a, an emotional, uh, he needed someone to heat him up to make him enthusiastic a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be true. About, and, and she's going to do that for him? Enthusiastic about what? Maybe she reminds him of his youth a little bit. No. Uh, absolutely. And you know what? The truth has to be said. No, no. I, I want to say something about it. Listen, the truth has to be said that David is portrayed um, in Sefer uh, Shmuel Bet and the person that, um, I would say, sexuality was not something foreign to him or strange to him. Uh, the story of Bacheva, he had few wives. 18. I'm sorry? Not 18 wives? 
18. There were 18. Yeah, 18 wives. Okay, the Tanakh in the Tanakh itself, we don't read about the 18. But as I said, this side of David was never like, um, you know, a hushed. No one uh, tried to make him uh, a saint or, you know, a Catholic uh, priest. He wasn't. Um, and it might be that, you know, at the end of the of his day, someone came with this idea. But you know what? I, I want to ask you a question. Okay, so this is the beginning of the Perek. And then you have the story about Adonia. What is the connection between the two parts of the story? The math, we, we spoke about it, and we brought the idea to highlight how Adonia uh, made himself a, the, a, I would say like self-appointed king because the weakness of David is highlighted by the fact that he was so weak and you can see it in the story about Avishag that you can understand how a person like Adonia a, could raise with no protest of David he simply did not have the energy spirit so one way to understand it is to say this story highlight, emphasize the weakness of David, and this will explain you why indeed David did not get involved in the story of Adonia before. The answer is that he couldn't see. He was a person like with no energy. He could not talk. He needed someone even to hit him. Of course, he was not a person who could uh, deal with all the politics in his own house. This is explanation that I think uh, the Radak uh, suggests. A another explanation is that this came actually to explain something in Perik Bet. When we are going to learn Perik Bet, we are going to see that even when Adonia lost the uh, competition, so to speak, with Shlomo, he still asked his um, uh, Bacheva to talk to Shlomo to give him Abishag. Now, if she was the wife of his father, then he could not have her. And therefore, the Tanakh says in the beginning of Melachim that he did not know her. They never had relation, and therefore Adonia later, who knew it apparently from the people around David, um, a, it was not inappropriate for him to ask her because he knew that nothing happened between. But as the Abba Banel and others said, well, if this is a story, the story has to be there and not in the beginning of Perek Aleph to explain something in the end of Perek Bet. Doesn't make so much sense, but it's another explanation. You know, when I reread the Perik, I thought about the following question. I always like to read the Perik and to imagine that I have to write like a script, a movie, uh, a play. Because you know what? I actually like to see the Disney movies about the Bible. I'll tell you why. Because basically what you see, what you watch, is a commentary to the Bible. You know, when someone has to write a movie, he has to write to a play, he had to think how one thing led to the other. And it's very interesting when you see like the Prince of Egypt, I, you know, it's not for the, the movie, I, I, I read the book. <laughs> but, but it's always interesting to see like how they understood the story. And it's quite fascinating. Some of the best perushim um, to the Tanakh were written actually by great uh, writers. You know, Thomas Mann, who I think uh, won the Nobel some in the 20s. Uh, one of his famous books is Yosef Echavit's uh, tri trilogy of uh, like three heavy books about the story of Yosef and his brother. And let me tell you, this is not only a story uh, beautifully written, it's his understanding of the story. Because the story is uh, hard to understand from the little detail the Torah provides us. You have to fill up the gap. Chachamim did it all the time. They uh, try to fill up the gaps that the Torah is telling us. Like, 
why this happened and what was the motive of uh, him to do that and so on. And the people who write or a, a, a movie, they have to show the, the uh, viewer like, well, how it happened, what, what, what led to what? And let's think for a second about the story of uh, Avishag Shunamit. I have to ask you a question. Who were the people who gave David or the people who managed him this idea? Where did this idea came from? From Shlomo and Bacheva, maybe? Maybe from Adonia? <coughs> who, who, well, you know what? Let's, let's think someone came with this idea. If someone came with this idea, we might say, well, it wa was all Leshem Shamayim. Leshem Shamayim, uh, David Amelech is uh, unfortunately uh, uh, cannot uh, hit himself. Well, we will get him a young lady. But I think that you know the way I, I think about the Tanakh, it's a, beside being Dvar Hashem, and of course, like Nevi'e Ha'emet Vatzedek, but on earth, things are done like they happen on earth. You know, power on one hand is um, a, somehow a tool in the hand of Hashem, but at the same time, I'm sure that everything in Mitzrayim was conducted as an empire. And Paro is the emperor, and many times if we want to understand how he acted, we just have to read the stories about the Roman emperors, or about Stalin or Hitler. And we will understand many, many things. Because emperors and, and tyrants uh, used to act in the same way. You don't have to have too much imagination um, to see the, the, the final solution of Hitler and Paro in a very similar way. So, yes, you know, on the scene of God and, and the world that he runs, there is one way to look at it, but we have to read the Tanakh also as a, a, a real place, real people who have real motives to do certain things. And my question is, who you think came with the idea of Abishag? Yes? Adonia. Adonia. Mm -hmm. What? Do I tell you one? But of course, of course. I, I'm because happy that I led you to this answer because I want you to read this answer, yes. Because um, this way he can show that his father is a very weak uh, guy at the end of his life and someone should really take over from him. And at the same time, I don't know if you agree with this, but by bringing a, a young girl into the picture, he, I think he makes his father look bad, kind of pathetic. You almost said everything that I'm going like, you know, like a good rabbi. <laughs> Something that you can say in five minutes, I'm going to stretch on the 45. <laughs> there is a story about like someone who produced uh, movies and he's going to the rabbi and he said, Rabbi, you know, um, I would like to record you, but you know, in the movie industry, um, you cannot talk like uh, to give a sermon of 45 minutes. Everything uh, can be in five minutes. Can, can you do it? So the rabbi said, eh, no, not a problem. We need for five minutes. So he said, so why yesterday you did it for 45 minutes? <laughs> 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 so so you, you answer, like, I'm going to go in this direction. It's a, it's a very good direction. Um, that actually, only like from last week, I started to think about it. Who came with this idea? It might be Adonia himself. Part of helping him to justify taking the place of his father, David, is by showing everyone that his father is uh, overbooted. He cannot do anything anymore. Weren't they in different places? It was all in Yerushalayim. Adonia was in Yerushalayim. He was, he, yeah, he was in Yerushalayim. He well, was apparently in the same even palace, uh, maybe in a different okay, room. But where was David at this time? Wasn't he out somewhere? No, you, at this time he's in Yerushalayim, he's in his house, he's near David. Okay. Uh, yeah, they were in the same place. And uh, Adonia, in order to prepare the, uh, the hearts of Bnei Israel, 
He said, yeah, you know, listen, you, you can see what's going on. My father cannot do anything. <coughs> he need to bring someone uh, else. Um, and you know, it's a very sad thing. Sometimes we see people in power and lo and behold, like uh, someone carry them like the, the uh, in Israel you call it the Filipini come and you know, they, 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 and they carry them. No, I'm, I'm saying it, it's a serious issue. Like, it's a very sad thing to see. People that were in power, the moment you see that um, someone comes and you know, um, start to carry them around, it's, you know, it's, that's it. The person uh, has no more power. The, the great person that we knew before is not the same person anymore. And this is a confirmation that indeed David cannot be the king anymore. And I think that Adonia was very sophisticated. He basically said, I'm a, I'm a responsible person. We, we, when we learned it, the last two weeks, we see him as a person who seeks power. But of course he did not tell the newspaper that he's, he's seeking power. He said, listen, the country need a king, need a ruler. My father, unfortunately, and you can see, cannot take care, care over the basic uh, things. He is uh, physically and mentally uh, incapable of running the country. Someone has to uh, make sure uh, to continue. Uh, we have a nation here. We have a country to run. I will do it. And therefore, he arranged this lady, uh, especially if uh, what Chazal are telling us that he knew that her fa his father actually cannot even use her because he had already 18 women that apparently um, uh, were waiting that David will die. And um, so it was more a PR issue, a PR, just a, a photo opportunity. So some people will say, whoa, you can't believe it like I saw. David Amelech like carried by by this Avishag Shunamit who came from nowhere. She was not even from Yerushalayim. She was somewhere from Afula. Um, uh, yeah, this was the the Filipino of the day. I'm, I'm not saying it in a bad way. You understand? Like it's like uh, it's uh, it's a sad thing when you need you are ill in a way that you must disappoint them. Yes. So I have a few questions about that. Hey, it was your answer. What do you want? <laughs> no, more, qu more questions. <laughs> yes. So first of all, what do they have to go across the entire country for? Like there aren't any pretty girls locally. And it says that they went throughout the borders of Israel. That's a little bizarre. That makes me think of Esther and Achishverosh. And, um, and why does she have to be a virgin? You know, I, basically he's ruined her life after that. Uh, I, there's, it's very weird. It, it is, and there is no question that the psukim here, or better said, the psukim of uh, the story of Ahasuerus are modeled after this psukim. But for a different reason that you might think, it's actually come to show the difference between David and Ahasuerus. For Ahasuerus, the search ended up with Bazot Anara Baal Amelech. Every night, this person, like, all his life, a king who ran an empire, it was much bigger than David. His mind are on parties, and every night with another girl. This, the, the, the Tanakh try to portray here uh, a person who is an empire but is completely irresponsible towards his empire. By the way, we don't learn Megillat Esther, but this will explain you what happened between the beginning of the Megillah and the end of the Megillah. And you have to be accountant to understand the uh, transformation of Ahasuerus. In the beginning of the Megillah, Ahasuerus is the one who uh, spent millions of dollars on party. 180 days, can you imagine? Like, Vashtiya Kadat Einones. Gold, silver, everywhere, meals, free, fantastic. But it cost money. You have to understand, when Haman came to Ahasuerus and said that he, what did he offer him? 
עשרת אלפים כיכר כסף, בוא תדע עשרת אלפים כיכר כסף. It's very simple. He's, uh, um, the cash reserves were like, I'm sure you, you already started to take debts. He was in debt. So Haman said, I have a great idea. You give me the Jews, I'll give you the money. What do you think? What happened? Do you know that all the Jews in, in, in Europe were transferred on their own money? They had to pay for the train that took them to Auschwitz. And there is a, a, a major theory that part of the, the agreement of the Nazis and the collaborators was the money of the Jews. They knew that something is waiting for them. I think that part of the theory is a little bit anti-Semitic, but I'm sure, I'm sure 100% that a war like this required lots of money and the Jews had it, had enough money to sustain the war machine of the Germans. So when Haman came and said, עשרת אלפים כיכר כסף, he knew exactly what, that Achashverosh will listen to him, because Achashverosh needed the money. The Megillah end in something which is very, very peculiar, which is that Achashverosh, Vayasem Achashverosh, Mas Al Yeayam, he taxed the remote island. Who cared that the tax and the... The answer is, he became responsible. You cannot run a country on parties. This is not like a popularity, a popularity match. This is a serious business to run an empire. So the beginning that starts with unbelievable spend of money ends that Achashverosh also changed. He became responsible. There is a reason why we say that, why the Tanakh is telling us that Achashverosh have changed because it connected to the story after of of Koresh and Daryavesh uh, that uh, gave the Jews uh, permission to go back to Yerushalayim. But the pshat of the Megillah requires explanation and money and financial is a big issue. It's a big issue here. So let's go back to Adonia. It might well be that Adonia, ah, and David, unlike Achashverosh, he really came to the point that if Chazal if the Perush of Chadal, that he had already 18 women and he could not add even one more, therefore he lo yeda. Or just to show that um, David, unlike Achashverosh, had some sense of responsibility. With no question, the Psukim there are modeled to show the difference between Achashverosh and David Amelech. With no, with no question, but yeah, it's nice that you, you saw it. Um, But you added one more thing, which I want to explore a little bit more. He said, you said, that he wanted his father to look bad. What, what did you mean exactly? Because this is very, very important. This is huge. I just, um, I meant that um, he, was, he was incapable of, 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 uh, of running the country on a day-to-day -day so basis. This was about his capability to run the king. That, that's what yeah. I thought you said in the beginning. Yeah. But then you said, when you, we want a bad PR to someone. Yeah, yeah. What is a bad PR? Look. By bringing I don't know. I, do, I, I felt that, that um, by, by their having to bring a young girl to him, it kind of made him look pathetic. Okay, you know what? Let's think a little bit about it. What indeed all this, um, uh, I don't know how you call it here, to this uh, like gossip newspaper, but in Israel you call it the yellow, yellow paper. Yellow. So yeah. Bonin. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yellow journalism. Same. Yellow journalism. What do you think they said about it? What, what do you think was the next like titles, the next day? Uh, you know, in the the metro, like you can read it for like. What, what, what do you so think? he's being he's being portrayed as really more like Achashverosh than David Amelech. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And this was on fertile area because yeah, David was exactly. associated with his a dubious relationship with women. And maybe Adonia had a terrific master plan here, 
which will connect us to the topic I wanted to discuss uh, last week and we did not have time. And not only that, do they have to bring him a woman, or, I mean, if you're taking that point of view, but that uh, to make it look like David insisted that we go through the entire kingdom because he needed the most beautiful woman and uh, that <coughs> a nice, young, beautiful woman. Um, you understand? The people who gave him the advice made sure to achieve the result. It's not going to be something in the local newspaper. If you know someone beautiful, uh, you know, we are looking for someone, uh, send uh, the CV and uh, we will see, or the picture, whatever, but Mr. Might, it's better. Bechol um, Gvul Israel. And obviously, these people that maybe Adonia send, <coughs> hey, that's what they announce. David Amelech is looking for a pretty girl, you know, maybe you know someone. <coughs> And I would tell you something. If I would be there, I would, I would feel terrible about my king um, that in an in old age, he's still looking for pretty girls. It's not, it's not a nice thing. <coughs> and it brings and portray the old king in a very bad and negative um, colors. Why this is important to Adonia? Well, I think that we have to, you know, one question we lead to another and to see now even the bigger picture. Before I ask you about the story about, uh, about uh, Adonia and how the story of Avishag is connected. But now, if indeed we are right, and of course we are right, um, <laughs> Uh, I want to take a look uh, on something that I think that the Tanakh is not telling us and we have to figure out, figure out between the lines. One of the comments we did was that Adonia is portrayed here like his brother Absalom. Like his brother Absalom. Now, what caused of Shalom, what was the trigger to Av Shalom rebel against his father David? And I would say one more thing. Okay, let's say that he was like the bad apple in the family of David. How he managed to take the heart of the people against an admired king, at least at the time. What was the main trick of Avshalom, you think? I think with no question, this is the story of David and Bathsheba. Until now, we spoke about the terrible and the tragic consequences of Chet of David. As Nathan predicted, he's going to pay four times for this Chet. And he lost four of his children, Avshalom, Amnon, the baby that was born to Bathsheba for the first time, only later Shlomo uh, uh, was born. Um, he paid dearly for uh, this hit. Okay, but this is between David and, and Hashem. But let's think about the people of Israel. I can assure you 100% that there were people in Am Israel that never forgave David for this. You know, all the excuses that we made are very, very nice. But people live in a certain time and certain area and they expect their king to stand to the highest uh, morals and the highest integrity existed. And I think that there were many, many people who were very disappointed in David. And when Avshalom came, they saw it as an opportunity to express their opinions. And now, I'm not saying it just because I guess so. Do you remember the story of Shim'i ben Gera at the end of Sefer Shmuel? When David the Melech has to leave Yerushalayim, there is a distinguished person, Shim'i ben Gera. He had some political issues because he came from the Shevet of Binyamin, the Shevet of Shaul. But he said to David the following, Tse Tse, Leave the city. Ish Hadamim, the person that shed blood, 
ואיש הבליעל, and you are the איש בליעל, a person of בליעל, I, I, I don't know even how to translate, but really a person with a low person. Now, okay, איש הדמית, דוד, all his life, shed lots of blood. Um, maybe, as I say, as we explained then, he saw David somehow responsible for the story of Nob because he put them in trouble when Shaul killed them. But what is Isha Blial? Isha Blial, you say, about someone who is really like a terrible person. A terrible person. What is Isha Blial? I think that Isha Blial means the person who took Bathsheba from, his, from her husband. That fits Ish Blial. Blial means in Hebrew, bli all, with no yoke, with no fear of anybody. What a low person will take, because he's a king, the wife of one of his generals. Ish Blial. This is not Ish Adamin, this is Ish Blial. And I think that lots of frustration from very serious people against David just came out with Absalom. And David accepted it. Remember what David did when his soldiers and his generals tried to uh, uh, convince him to kill Shimi ben Geira? He said, no, he is right. He knew that he has to pay a very large sum of punishment for what he did. He knew that it's all because the head of Bathsheba. And I'm sure that this scandal never left. It left such a scar on David that I even tend to believe that as he got older, this caught him for this situation. A person was you know, in a terrible remorse and in a terrible pain about what he did. Because as we, you all say, he's 70 years old. Many of us are before or a little bit after. We don't feel like David. He, you know, when a person wants to beat himself uh, up, he does it so very successfully. And that's what happened here. And Adonia wanted to do the same. Now, for Adonia, it was very, very important. Because I guess that many people knew that Natan Anabi predicted, Haben hayotze mimeecha uirashecha, that someone that is going to be born is going to be the successor of David. Who was it? Shlomo Amelech, later. And I think that Adonia had a great idea how to fight this. He will make Bathsheba and her son, as a result of this affair, a people who does not deserve to live. Let's go back to the words of Bathsheba. Everything that I'm going to say, I want to uh, obviously like to show it in the Psukim. I think that what made David understanding <coughs> the severity of the situation is in Pasuk Chafalif. והיה כשכב אדוני המלך עם אבותיו, you see פסוק חפה לפיץ פייץ שרי in these pages, um, when my lord the king shall sleep with his father, והייתי אני ובני שלמה חטאים, and I and my son Solomon shall be offenders. And we asked last time, what is offenders of what? Sinners of what? חטאים. Uh, you know, there is a way to get rid of leaders. I'll tell you something that you maybe never heard. Let's say that there is a very powerful leader in a country. And uh, he's Mr. Popular. He won the election. And someone came with an idea that he calls impeachment. The legal system is going to defeat him. 
the legal system is very powerful. You can, uh, if you have the good lawyer on your side, the senator or the senate, ah, you can impeach even very strong people. No, no, as I said, it's all invented. Um, there is a way to get rid of Adonia, a very simple way. If indeed we are right, that there was a basic anger and frustration about what David did, it's very possible that after the elections, uh, after David will die, <laughs> after David will die, <laughs> and when election will come between Adonia and Shlomo, Adonia will manage to convince the people that Shlomo is the most unsuitable person to the job. His mother was Eshet Ish, who, as you know, every PR and uh, if uh, you have the journalism on your side, she may be actually even um, seduced David. And therefore, if, he's, if she's Eshetish, and she actually caused this to, to David, number one, she should be killed. Eshetish. Number two, the results of this uh, kind of uh, affair, Shlomo, cannot be the king. This is a shame. And Bathsheba know that this is going to happen. Eh, Bacheva, eh, yeah, Bacheva. When she comes and says, Ve'aiti ani u'shlomo b'ni chataim, she said, we are going to be impeached, we are going to be killed by Adonia. And the whole legal system will celebrate that actually they send the right people to the electric chair, or whatever it is, uh, according to the Torah. Now, this is bad. This is bad. But I'll tell you what is worse than that. And that, I think, made David change the whole way he behaves here. If indeed Adonia will be successful, and by the way, bringing a woman to the, to the family uh, will highlight this idea that where is Bathsheba here? Why Bathsheba is not serving the king? Why this young lady? Because the king might be portrayed as a person who doesn't want anymore, at least before he dies and he's doing tshuva, he doesn't want business with Bathsheba. Very smart, very astute plan. Like how to portray Bathsheba as a woman that actually she's responsible for what happened. But you know what implicit in it? If Adonia will get rid of Bathsheba and Shlomo, who is he going to get rid of? Natan. Natan, number one, who predicted that Shlomo is going to be, but more than that. The legacy of David. Before he dies, she's telling him, you have to understand what the plan here, my king, my lord. Your legacy, everything that you build is going to be destroyed. You are going to be remembered as a noef, as a person who misused me, my son is chote, I am chote, and indirectly, you are the Chote. Everything that you worked for is going to be not only forgotten, but there will be a posthumous uh, disgrace to everything that you worked for. And as I said before, when David got this point, he understood that all his life Everything that he tried to build is in danger. And everything changed in this moment. Mm -hmm. 
this was such a shock for him, because for the first time he understood that everything that he did is still a matter of PR. How people are going to look at it in a generation from now. You know what people will, will say? Ah, we had a king. In the beginning he was so good, but at the end, what a shame, what a busha. We don't want to remember anything. They will take, listen, there are many people today who 20, 30 years ago, we hold like on a pedestal, how do you say it? Pedestal. And 30 years later, me too are telling you this was a terrible person. And everything, you think that anyone in Hollywood or here or there still have their plague on the wall? They take that with disgrace. No one wants to remember them. And she said to him, that's exactly what is going to happen to you. She said it very nicely. So here and Shlomo, but David is no stupid. He understand that if they are gone, he's gone. I mean, he's gone, maybe literally, but nothing is going to be left. No, no legacy is going to be left. And no person, especially now David, who worked so hard to build Malchut Israel, can take something like this. And the moment he understand it, he got the last power, the last force forces to protect himself, his legacy, what people will remember from David Amelech. And he understand if Shlomo is not going to be the next king, he will not be remembered as the king. David himself not going to be remembered as the king. And Bathsheba, in her wisdom, knew how to deliver this message to David. And when she said, Vaiti ani ugni Shlomo why Chataim? You just are going to lose maybe the kingdom and maybe he will kill you. That's a serious issue. But Chataim? I got the point here. I got what is going to happen. I must, I don't want to make David too selfish, but he, he, the first time that he understood, I, I worked all my life to achieve something. I managed so much to achieve and now everything is in danger by Adonia. What do you think? Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. Yes. What about, the, what about the aspect of the fact that many people know that Shlomo, that the Navi said Shlomo is going to ask to be the next king. This is what, they're, this is what God wanted. This is God's plan, what Hashem wanted. It doesn't play a role. Okay, it makes it, it, it doesn't erase the fact that David could be forgotten uh, or only, only remembered as a terrible person. His legacy could be destroyed, but it, it's not a complete... You know, I, I agree, but you know what, the, the power of Lashon Hara and PR and presenting things in a certain way is enormous. We know it our days and it was not very different in their days. Like, you see, and he's, he's on campaign. The whole story is like one campaign to smear the name of his father because this will enable him to become the king. And... Uh, um, Maybe, I have to say that, maybe they, even his children saw that their father um, was, was not right, did something awful. And Nathan and David, they knew that yes, he will get a very severe punishment, but, but Hashem will atone it. Hashem will atone it. And that was the promise of Nathan to David, that Abena Yotze Mimecha, he will build the house, um, but as I said, you know, people, people are people and sometimes they cannot judge things as us, like with perspective of 3,000 years. At the time, they, and even maybe his children were very extremely disappointed with him. And Adonia used it uh, for his uh, purposes. Okay. Um, Let's examine one more thing. Because here is a big question. If I give you one sentence, one sentence, don't, don't try to outsmart me. <laughs> um, with no ve, vav, vav achibur, and, 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 no end, give me one word that will describe David the best way for you. Again, 
not a sentence, sorry, one word that will describe David for a person who never heard about him. David was one word. The, the word that will describe him the best way you think. That's a very hard assignment. Anav? Anav? Mm. No. Say heroic. Heroic? What do you mean? Say hero. When I, when I think of heroic, I think of someone, a deep kind of person. Hero. Like, yes. Hero. Like he, different sides to him. But he, well, this, this for sure, the best word to describe what uh, David did in Shmuel Aleph. A person who is like taking uh, Goliath, taking down Goliath and all the wars of Israel and uh, managed to uh, establish like uh, a kingdom, for sure. It, this is the only one. This showed that I was apparently, you, you got what I tried to teach. He was a hero. He was a great general. He was uh, um, a, a great warrior. Well, he, he was a great leader. He was a great leader, for sure. His problems with the family something else, you know. A great leader doesn't necessarily... I think in, in, mean heroic, heroic implies he's not a normal person. It's something, it's to me anyway, different. someone who's heroic, this is not a, a run of the normal kind of thing. It implies something there, not the, exactly... The brothers. Okay, now let no, me ask this. Yes. Maybe single-minded? Si okay, let's not try to analyze him, but like a word that will <laughs> describe him. That might be all true. Anav is also something which is uh, a, a, a character, one of the characters of David for sure. Now, let me ask you, okay, in your imagination, we go south, crossing Lawrence, and I go to one of the yeshivot over there and ask, tell me, David Amelech, one word, what do you think he's going to say? Talmid Chacham. Talmid Chacham. Well, let me tell you, for sure they will say that, although the Tanakh never speak about it. It's Sadiq. It's Sadiq. Why, why is it Sadiq? Because they won't accept that he ever did anything that was incorrect, ever. Well, the, you know, it's very hard to defeat the Tanakh, although I've heard al it although I heard, you know why they don't hear Tanakh in the Yeshivot? You know why? Because no one gave it a skama. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't learn a, a book with no askama, and the Tanakh comes with not. We don't touch it. Um, a, but um, more seriously, and, and actually quite accurately, yes. I'm back up north again. I I, I hesitated to say it. No, go so. No. <laughs> I, I I hesitated to say it before, but I don't know. I I keep thinking royal because, because in some think. way he always had like not a big picture but a a, a a high picture in mind like it's very in true in spite of all the chataim in spite of all the downfalls and the pitfalls like a big picture of it's, okay. am Yisrael and like royalty. exceptional leader uh, something like, something like this. The, yeah. the, the royal thing I, I completely stood, agree with you and honestly steps. this is the way that we always portrayed him like an unusual character in many many ways but I'll tell you one thing. I just found it here. Tell him, tell him, right. All the tehillim that we say. You know, when a Jew is doubting, he's doubting only from the, the words of David Melech. He was a great prayer, like a, a spiritual person. So, indeed, in Sefer Shmuel, the purpose of the, the writing about Shmuel is about the leadership, uh, the unusual character of the first king of Israel. But we cannot ignore uh, this part. And you know what? When you think about it, in Baruch Shama, what do we say? We say something very, very important, which is actually quite unbelievable. We say, Uveshirei David Abdecha, do you know that actually when people wrote this Mirot Shabbat, many people did not want to sing it, obviously in the Ashkenazi communities. Why? Because it's not Shirei David Avdecha. There is a lacha here, when you sing to Hashem, you are allowed to sing only the songs of David Amelech. He knew how to sing to Hashem. He knew how to write a song to Hashem. No one else. And therefore, when you, we say Psukei de Dimra, it's only Psukim from Tehillim. Why? When we say Hallelujah this morning, is only Psukim from Tehillim. Because David the Melech, 
He knew how to sing to Hashem. And it's interesting by itself, maybe we should do it after we finish Melachim, is to learn Tehillim and to see how Tehillim corresponds with the uh, events in the life of David, how he translated what happened in real life to a song to Hashem, if it was over victory, if it was over defeat, over a tragedy in his home, uh, the story of Tshuva. He translated life to songs to Hashem. That's unbelievable. Who is the real David? <laughs> <laughs> so was he a hero or a prayer? How do we want to remember him? That's a major question. I have to tell you, you know, I had the schut, which is a very sad one. Um, in the years I was here, I was asked by a few families to write a matzeva. Let me tell you, it's not a simple thing. You have to write a story of a lifetime in few words. And it's very, very hard. And you know what? Sitting with the families, I realized many, many times that each one perceives a person differently. What the father meant to one daughter is very different from what he meant to the son. And it amazed me. Actually, in chat, uh, you know, we have in, in teachers' meeting we have TED Talks of teachers. And... Uh, they asked me what do I want to talk to, and I wanted to talk about this one. How we are remembered, it's really like fascinating. But they say that it's too dark. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I had to change it to something different. Anyway, um, but really, you should know what Perek Aleph in Melachim is how we are going to remember David Amelech. That's what is here. In, that's, that's a topic of Perik Aleph. How David is going to be remembered. Because this will shed light on everything that is going in Perik Aleph. David was a great warrior. He was very energetic, a person who could control uh, the nation, the nations around him. And many, many people saw David, first of all, as a great leader. And Adonia saw himself as a successor of the leadership of David. He was Tovroi. He was admired and apparently very charismatic by the people. And all this is very important for a king. And he believed that he carries this character of David to the next generation. Think about the people who joined him. Why you have joined Adonia and not Shlomo? And I'm sure that Adonia also thought about or knew about the Nevoah of Natan. After all, it's all like happening in in few, uh, I would say, uh, 200 meters square of Ir David. He knew about the Nevoah of Natan. But remember that all the story of Yoav and David is about the warrior. He's his general, the general of the chief of staff. And for him, someone has to take this mission over. And who is the person? Like Shlomo Amelech is a, is a picture 12 years old. Adonia is strong, powerful, energetic. And he, his connection to David was on this side of the leadership, of the warrior, of the person who can control the nations around. And therefore he says, listen, to me, David was this person. Adonia is the successor of this person. Avdei Amelech, Avdei Yehuda, they also, what they remember from David is this image of David, the general, the ruler, the leader. And they see Adonia as the natural successor of David. But, but Sheva and Natan are talking a completely different language. They know that everything that David did did not come because he was a great general. He was a great general because the values he carried in his heart. Beit HaMikdash, 
Am Israel, Hashem. For them, with no question, even though they didn't leave uh, south of Florence, this was David Melech. Or at least I would say the following David Melech is not just a person, he established a dynasty that is going to be forever. Until this very day, in every Shmona Esrei, et semach David avdecha meirat atzmiach, we end the aftarot, ve'al kiso lo yeshev zar. David HaMelech for us is something that is still living. His legacy is still here, here. And you know what? Wars, even great wars, cannot internalize a person. He will be remembered for it, but to make things eternal, this Sefer Tehillim, I can tell you, 1,000 years down the road, people will say Tehillim. 5,000 years down the road, people will say Sefer Tehillim. Because the values of Sefer Tehillim are going to last forever. They are so profound and they cover every perspective of a person's life that this will be forever. And you can write Tehillim only if you are a person of Tehillim. What is the first Mizmor? The first Mizmor Everything that he said is true and correct. Everything that he... Um, and she comes and says, David, you are not just a warrior. To me, you are the person of the healing. You are the Neki Kapayim. You are the Bar Levav. You promised me that my son is going to be the next king. You can write, you cannot write Tehillim and not to respect your, your own words. And this was David Melech. We spoke many, many times. For David, politically, the easiest thing would be to get rid of Bacheva somehow. Um, he will take his lawyers, they will strike a deal. You don't talk about uh, what happened. Uh, take the house, take a few million uh, uh, shkalim, and let's do it. And he had the power to do it. He had the power to do it, with no question. Uh, people all over the world uh, in all kinds of uh, situations, they did things like this. David never denied what happened with Bacheva. It's a major issue. It's exactly what his forefather Yehuda did with Tamar. You know, it was a moment that if Yehuda would say, I don't know who it belongs to, Tamar would be killed, no one will know that Yehuda is responsible for this. No one. No one. And Yehuda took full responsibility, and he said, Tzadka Mimeni, she's pregnant for me. I'm sure that he felt terrible. I'm sure that the uh, newspaper, the headlines uh, the next day were very sensational and uh, not uh, complimenting Yehuda. <coughs> But he took responsibility, <coughs> exactly like David, many generations later. That's what makes a great king. Not a person who does not do mistakes, but someone who can stand the mistakes, learn from them, and to take responsibility for them. Uh, next year, we are going to complete this idea, uh, which I believe is exactly the difference between Adonia and Shlomo, Batsheva and Avishag. I will just give you this tip. If indeed uh, the king is just a person who uh, was a warrior and uh, um, once he's not a warrior anymore, he's a over -booter. No one needs him. Uh, then what he needs is masharetet, a lady that will come and help him to do this and to do that and to feed him and to uh, wash him and all kinds of things. But sometimes old people who cannot function are still like a spiritual bacon. They are, they are something that you can listen to their values, to their stories. I just today when I came here I heard like a... A, a lady, 95 years old, uh, now that they, they commemorate uh, the, the liberation of Auschwitz, she spoke so profoundly, so beautifully. She old, I'm sure that she had difficulties to walk, but the wisdom, the insight, the reflection are amazing. And if this is the case, 
then the wife will see other sides rather than just unable to eat or to sleep or to generate heat. It's something more than the values of the person. And when we are going next week to read how Bathsheba referred to David, she's talking to him about a completely different David than Abishag or the people who are around David. She spoke to him in the terms of the Melech. Yechi Melech David Leolam. Why? Because the values of David are, are never going to diminish. So it's a completely different David, which eventually lasts. Which eventually lasts. So we will talk a little bit about it next week, and we will uh, uh, end Perik Aleph and start Perik Bet. So I already made Perik Bet, and we.